we want to say welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, you officially live? Is it still thinking? I think it's going. Oh, there we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Let's try that again. Uh, welcome to San Jose. Uh, I'm Sam. This is Jose. And uh, thank you for joining us this evening as we enjoy a wine from Spain. Um, it is called, what, Cornada? La Cornada. La Cornada. Um, I'm going to let the guy that speaks Spanish. La Cornada. Um, and Jose looked up something interesting about this because this particular wine is made with a specific grape yeah. known to Spain, correct? Yes. What's the name of um, that? So I found out about it because I was looking at the label. And usually, like, the label to let you know if, like, what, the vineyard vintage, um, the type of grapes that they use, and then the actual, like, name for that brand or whatever. Um, so I was looking at this, because that, that was the first time I actually see it. I don't know if you can see it. Um, but it says Crianza 2015, which Crianza means, like, harvest in Spanish in 2015. Uh, I guess in the year. So I was like, okay, so it's a 2015 harvest. And then Tempranillo, which means kind of, like, for me, for my Spanish, means, like, an early. So I was like, oh, is it an early harvest? Um, but actually, Tempranillo means it's a black grape variety that's used to make red wine. So it is actually native to Spain. So it was actually really neat. And it's called Tempranillo because it is an earlier, they have to harvest those grapes earlier than the regular red grapes. Yeah. So that's a fun fact that I... Uh, Learn from this one. And it makes a very full-bodied red wine. This one particularly is very full-bodied. It's a nice, um, it's got notes of, uh, I guess, does it say black cherry and plum? I did note the black cherry. We have been sipping it a little bit. Uh, one more thing I'm going to show you with this bottle as we explore it a little more. Uh, for those of you just joining us, welcome. Uh, this is the wine we are enjoying tonight from Spain. Uh, made with a temp uh, tempranillo, tempranillo grape. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Uh, so tonight we are using an aerator. This one specifically uh, will allow you to uh, give a certain amount of aeration based upon how much you tilt the bottle. Uh, this is one that we use at the winery that we work at. Um, I enjoy it. So, but the more you tilt it, the more it aerates. You can see kind of with that flow, it allows some water in through the neck, not water, air. You don't want water <laughs> in your wine. Well. <laughs> that won't make it good at all. But it allows some air in there. So the thing is, with these red wines, uh, normally you would swirl it. Uh, we don't have the red wine glasses, so our bowl's not very large. If we swirl it, I'll get it all over Jose's laptop, and he will be upset at me. Somebody um, will be dead today. <laughs> and uh, babies will cry. <laughs> and dogs will howl at the moon for hours and it just won't be pretty. So, but here we have a nice red wine that is aerated. So the amount that I poured it, if I tipped it all the way up, it's like four to six hours of aeration equivalent. Uh, but it allows air to mix with the wine. Now that enables you to get the notes on the nose as you stick your nose into the bowl of the glass. And those notes are going to help you find it. Now this is a very, um, it's got a lot of tannins in it. It's very, very full-bodied wine. It's full-body, yeah. Yes, we love it. Tilt Mini, yep, Denise knows. I guess you can actually look up um, Tilt we'll, Mini. We'll put a link on it uh, later for the Tilt Mini as far as the aerator that we used to show you as far as, it's good for red wines, especially if you enjoy them and you enjoy them without wanting to decant them or let them kind of aerate a little bit. Um, but the Tilt Mini is by Host, uh, which is a company that makes great wine paraphernalia. So now we've talked a little bit about wine, red wine, and aeration. Um, you can decant it. That's pouring it into a decanter and allowing it to kind of aerate itself for several hours. We don't have time for that here today, tonight. So we're not going to nope. do that. So we just shared it in the comments, the Tilt Mini. You can buy it on Amazon or you can come to a winery in Florida. We're not going to talk about that tonight. Not but tonight, uh, to pair with our nice red wine, Jose's uh -huh. idea for our topic this <laughs> evening will be our first visits to certain theme parks. Um, these may be memorable stories uh, when we were younger, older, whatever. We've got a few of them for you. We so, only had one. 
Oh, you have a few because you always have. I have like, stories five for every story. Yeah, why I mean, not? I can, I can do two different stories because technically I can tell them one about my current job. Yeah. But, you know, we'll get to that one when we get to that. All right. So I will tell one, and then Jose will tell one, and then I'll tell a second one because that seems to work. Sure. Because I've got more than one. Yes. Um, uh, I'm going to bring up my very first visit to Universal Orlando, and and mainly because when I moved to Orlando right out of high school, now I graduated out of high school when uh, at 18, I moved right down here. My parents kind of assisted a little bit. Um, so it, it was a little bit of a, a, a culture change. I didn't have any family down here. My goal was after I graduated from high school was to move to Florida and to work at Disney and to have access to all the theme parks because I've always loved theme parks. So that's what I did. And my, my parents kind of helped me find a place to live, moved in with several guys in an apartment up in Metro West. But anyways, while we were getting everything in order, we moved, the first day we came down here, that afternoon, uh, we stayed at a little motel near Universal. And I walked across the street in a few blocks and my goal was to get my annual pass for Universal. I had already had the money because I had saved up money. And, and part of that was to get an annual pass. And But it was kind of a milestone for me because that was indicative of what the life was that I was creating at Universal. At, 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 I did work at Universal later. But <laughs> uh, the life I was creating for myself in Orlando because that's the future I saw for myself coming out of high school and then going to school here and everything. And I did. I did all of that. But... Um, Going back, I walked quite a distance to get into the Universal property, and I was crossing through a crosswalk really fast right before the light changed, and it was counting down, and someone actually wasn't paying attention and hit me, but I I, I pushed along. Yeah, I was hit by a car, <laughs> and I was crossing in a crosswalk. Uh, oh, but it's yeah, Florida, it's, it's, so. it is Florida, and it was tourists, and they were probably on their phones, and this was 2002, so it, it almost... 18 years ago. But anyways, you can hear that aeration coming through there. That's really exciting. But so all I did was I went up there and I remember the woman at the ticket window and I said, I want to buy an annual pass. And she said, okay, well, you know, and she said, oh, I've got a Coca-Cola can back here. And so you get a discount. And so I got a little bit of a discount. And then I went in and I wrote the Hulk and that was it. I waited in line for like 40 minutes. I rode the Hulk. I had watched all of these theme park shows on Discovery and the Travel Channel and all these things for several years about the Orlando parks. I'd never been to Florida. And so I walked and I waited in line to buy my annual pass. And then I went inside and I did the Hulk. And that is it. And I walked back. I got hit by a car so that I could ride the Hulk. <laughs> Did you cry? I didn't, but it was really amazing. And then the next day, I went back with my parents, and we spent the whole day at Islands of Adventure, which was really amazing. Did you get hit by a car then? I did not. Wow. Uh, but all good stories, you know, they begin with Sam getting hit by a car. <laughs> Maybe. Let's, let's hope that's not true. No, no. That's, that's not true. Say that they all start with you. No, I don't want to get hit by a car. No, but Every I did. I mean, time. I did bump my hip. I didn't. I wasn't injured. I I went and rode a roller coaster right afterwards. You know, get hit by a car. You go ride a roller coaster instead of going to the emergency room. It seems like a pretty good thing to do. <laughs> it's fine. I live on the wild side. It's fine. So that was for me. It was an impactful experience simply because it kind of was the beginning of my life here in Orlando, and it's been a fun journey. Uh, yeah. So there we go. That's my first visit. I in feel Orlando. like, you know, if I didn't know you, I would say that you were making those things up <laughs> because honestly, every time you're like this random extreme thing happened and I'm like, how, how does that happen to you? Yeah, it does. But you know, just like Kim just said, or breaking glass. Does it does. It just happens. <laughs> How does it, Sam break glass? It, it happened the other day, and it just broke. And I was like, I, I told you. I because know. my stories never have that fun, <laughs> extreme. I mean, it, maybe I'm just more careful. I guess it is funny that I'm like, yeah, and then I got hit by a car. But I was so excited, I just went and rode the roller coaster anyway. Jeez. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I don't have like, any stories of me getting hit by a car. Okay, that sounds like I, I was a mess then. But I had my my crap together. Okay. 
I mean, I'm still here. <laughs> I feel like it was also like your fault too. Just excited to go through that ticket window. I'm getting my annual It was pass. still counting down when I started through the crosswalk. Okay, your story now. I'm going to have a sip of this. Okay, so anyways. So I'm going to... No, these are glass ones. So we're very careful. Uh, and he stresses me out. Halfway through this talk, I'm always like really nervous. Denise asked if these are plastic. Now, we could get acrylic ones. Um, just... just Put it down. Take a sip. Tell your story. Put Tell your story. Tell your story. Uh, <laughs> see, Denise, if it breaks now, it's going to be your fault. Because yeah. you brought it up. I've broken every other glass but these two, so this is on you, <laughs> Denise. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so my first story is um, the first time that I actually went into Walt Disney World. Um, I've lived, at the time, I think I lived in Orlando for... Close to 10 years, I think. Um, and I've never been to any of the parks. Um, for us, it wasn't a huge deal. Like, my family always wanted to go into the parks, but we had more, like, our priorities were kind of set up differently, and tickets were really expensive for us at that time, so we couldn't afford it. So we would always just do the, just a little drive around uh, to, like, downtown Disney, and we didn't actually get out of the car. We just kind of drove around, and that's it. But when I started, um, when I went to Disney World, I was actually hired um, to work for Disney in their entertainment department. Um, I think I waited like two months. So we, my, one of my friends and I auditioned. We just went for fun. And um, her name's Miranda. I'm pretty sure she'll probably be watching or watch this later. Um, but we just went for fun. Um, they want, they offered me a spot, but they didn't have like an open slot at that moment. So they were like, we'll just call you once that spot opens up. Two months later, they called me back up to go into training and traditions and all that fun stuff. Um, we actually get into our training for entertainment. They're like, who's been to the parks before? And, oh, hey, Oral. Hey, Oral. Um, and everybody is like raising their hands. And of course, I'm the only one in the whole entire group that has not been to any of the Disney parks. So they are automatically going, wait, you've never been to the parks? I'm like, no, I've just never been. They're like, you're lying. What's what's your favorite ride? What's your favorite character? I'm like, I have no idea. Because Disney wasn't a big thing for me. So third day into training, our instructor, she was like, okay, I can't have a conversation with you because I don't know your favorite character. I don't know your favorite park. I don't know your favorite ride. So we're going to go into the park. And we're like, what? So they actually cut our training in half That for that day. They just made it a short day. And they just brought us into the park. First park that I ever went to was Epcot. Um, and we went through um, America, through the back gate where I think it was Big Al and one of the other bears is a little bit of the country bears like shaker yeah. yeah but big al was out there and that was the, one of the first characters i actually interacted with as well and that was my first time ever seeing one of the disney parks um which is probably why epcot is one of my favorite ones uh besides the alcohol and the food and you know all the countries and all that stuff um but that was a really that was the first time that i said wow these parks are huge and they're very detailed and then that same day after we went back to training and our class was done, I went right back into the parks and I don't think I've stopped going ever since. No. <laughs> Shortly after that, I got my annual pass for SeaWorld. I went to Universal um, and I just, you know, started going from there on. Yeah, so we are, my... we're definitely theme park junkies because I moved down here to work for Disney. I did that. I worked for Universal, I've worked for SeaWorld, I've continually had access to all of the parks, pretty much for the most part, living down here. Um, the first time I went to Disney World, now I had grown up going to Disneyland, uh, I grew up in Salt Lake, so we would drive down to Disneyland, 13 hour drive in a big blue van, all seven of us in the family, five kids, but my first time going to Disney World was actually my first shift, which was my tradition shift, as far as the Magic Kingdom goes. But the first time I saw the castle was from the back. 
was <laughs> was Sorry, yeah the the bus <laughs> the bus comes up and as you go down to the entrance of the tunnel on the back side of it um at the time it was the back side of twenty thousand leagues under the sea which is completely gone mm-hmm. they built be our guest restaurant everything is where that is now the little mermaid ride but uh the first time i saw cinderella castle was from the back as we went down this hill in the back and i just was like whoa it's a castle and uh, we did traditions. We went in and we rode Buzz Lightyear and did a couple of other quick stops. But um, little did I know, I, at some point in my career, I was going to work in Tomorrowland. At some point in my career, I would sit and stare at that castle in the middle of the night when no one was on Main Street. Uh, when I was a parade coordinator, we'd do these parade rehearsals. And I would literally be the only person on Main Street USA staring up at the castle. And here comes the 12 o'clock bell. You know, very majestic and magical, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm all by myself, and I worked here several years, but I'm still touched by this. But um, those are kind of those cool experiences. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing, like, and that's the what people say the magic. Oh yeah, of, of Disney is those little moments that it's it's just seconds that you really truly feel that that moment. You just you you cast it at a grasp it at a yeah. glance. You just like when we go in, we'll go into the parks. Now you've kind of heard our first introductions to some some of these local theme parks but we've worked at all of them we've experienced them as guests Mm -hmm. and we've we've kind of grown Mm -hmm. a little bit as humans with these parks alongside of us we've met a lot of great people a lot lot of of incredible (laughs) people a lot of incredible experiences uh, that i i cannot even describe so the theme parks for us have definitely been an incredible experience and it's it's a very interesting time right now with them being closed and a lot of our friends are not working right now, which is very incredibly scary to a certain degree. There's a lot of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I find value in us remembering those good times and looking back on those quality experiences that we have within the parks because those will come back. Oh, yeah. They will. Yeah. Um, it's it's a matter of time. It's a matter of when, not if. You know. So those are the things that I think we kind of discuss and grasp upon that are really really exciting. But um, but yeah, the the parks are great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's always there's you know I can't even count the moments that I've had that I that I do remember and I can tell you like every single noise that was going on every single person that was around us and everything just because I try to like mentally remember that time um and it's just that magical moment and it's not just Disney it's also like Universal Sea World uh Legoland um any park oh yeah there's always I remember uh, the first time I went to Busch Gardens I remember the first time I went to Sea World I remember the first time yeah. I I went to Holiday World up in Indiana like that was a cool little park but uh I took my nephew. That's another story. My first visit to Holiday World. Our first time at Six Flags. And after being to all these parks, I'm like... You're like, oh, I had a first time there, too. I had a first time. <laughs> like, I remember my first time at SeaWorld San Antonio when, when we moved to Texas. Oh, I'm jealous. And we would... No, it was a really cool park because we went... We would go to that park every year right around my birthday. And my, my mom would pull me out of school on a Friday and we would go in. And it was just really exciting. So, uh, these parks nationwide the first visit is always very impactful uh and and new lands as they open them up i love living in orlando (laughs) and when they open up new lands going and experiencing for the first time like diagon alley when when i first stepped into diagon alley at universal studios i i i I was actually working at the time and i stepped in and they, they hadn't officially opened the land and someone was giving me a tour of the entertainment spaces and I was all professional and straight faced on the outside, but on the inside, I was running around spinning, going, "Wee!" <laughs> if, if Oral is still watching, which I think he he still is, the first time he actually went into Diagon Alley, I I went to the team member preview, um, and I had um, an extra ticket, and we went out um, on a regular day with him, and he's like, "Oh, I just really want to see it," so we went in, and right when we went through that brick wall. I turn around to see Oral's reaction and it's just tears coming down his yeah. face. <laughs> and I was just like, all right, this is why I love working in theme parks because yeah. of those reactions. You it's know, incredible. It's, you know, and it's not just the Disney magic. There's also you know, and, and all kinds of magic. To be exposed to it, like I said, I moved here in 2002 and I went to theme parks before that in amusement parks, but to be exposed on a very large scale 
so much so every day living in it, working in it, theme parks, the escapism, we are still not jaded from it. Like we still step into some of these lands and still go, wow, it's still great. Even Epcot, like we go drink around the world and you step into some of these countries and you still notice little homages or little plugs here and there. It's just, especially if you travel to those places in real life, like if you travel to the UK or Italy or something, and then you come back and you actually see like the little details that they actually were able to grab and actually bring them to life here. That's, you know, it's kind of like reliving that moment again while you were in Italy, but now you're just in Florida and you're like, oh, this all looks familiar now. Yeah. So yeah. it's really neat. I can see what they did there. So, yeah. um, but I think that's it for tonight. Um, again, you weren't going to say your other story. I only have the two. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. Um, so uh, if, again, if you're joining us towards the end, here's the label of the wine we enjoyed this evening. It is from Spain. I picked this up actually at Aldi, um, but looked it up online and it is available at most supermarkets, uh, that are larger, mm -hmm. like the larger chains and should be able to find it like a total wine and more. This is a 2015 vintage. So I don't know. Um, how long the shelf life is on some of these. Some wines, especially nowadays, are mainly younger wines meant to be consumed within about three to five years after being bottled. Uh, so we're going to finish off this bottle now. Thank you so much for joining us for our wine talk and our fun theme park stories, especially the initial visits this yeah. evening. And um, as we continue through this, we're going to continue these again. This is Friday night. We'll do it again on Monday. We've got already our wines lined up for next week. We've got a nice barrel aged mm. wine for one of the nights. And then another one from the freak show winery, freak the freak show. show label. So, but a different Every one. Every time from I that. just hear that name, like freak show, I just think of Britney Spears. Yeah. Her song, freak show. Oh, that's <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We are welcome to San Jose. We, uh, please continue to check out our videos on YouTube. Uh, just go to YouTube, type in welcome to San Jose. It'll take you to San Jose. And you go, no, 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 I wanted San Jose. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, our most recent video is our one from Barcelona. We're editing our ones from the cruise that we took last November. So make sure you subscribe so you can catch those as they come out. And we have lots of other great ones. So thank you for joining us tonight. Lots of wine talks coming up. If you have any ideas for episodes, go ahead and leave those comments on this video on our Facebook page. We'll go ahead and scroll through them. And if there's anything that you want us to talk about or stories that you'd love to hear, we want to give you what you want to hear. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. We love being able to make this connection with you virtually. Yeah. And you have a great night. Good night, guys. Cheers. Stay safe. Mm -hmm. Got an inline video. We're still not. We're still live. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm not hit it.